today's episode, we are doing a little bit of a change up here and we are sharing some fun facts with you. We're talking about dry scalp hair loss or hair thinning, eczema, psoriasis, and things you can do for that. We also cover cellulite and body fat spot reduction. So take a listen. If you like these episodes, let us know. Email us at info at fitmomlife.com. Or if you want to submit a question, you can do so at fitmomlife backslash ask. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning. Happy hump day. Yes, yes, yes. I cannot believe that we are like halfway through the summer. The summer is going by so fast. It's very depressing. I know. If we, we lived so south, we wouldn't have to worry. I know. About I know. November through May. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but like April. I know. I keep looking at houses too. My uh, my in laws were talking. I heard my I overheard my father in law talking about. Well, Nick and Becca are talking about moving, and if they move, we'll probably just get a condo by them and move to Arkansas because Nick's sister lives in Arkansas. Yeah, in Bentonville, which I like. Bentonville. It's a really cute town. It's very up and coming. Um, I just don't know if I'd want to live there. Yeah, they still get like winter. Yeah, Art wants to be Blue Ridge Mountains still. Yeah, yeah, or Knoxville. That's Actually, fun fact, when I was talking to my coach this morning, he wants to move to Knoxville Oh yeah, in the next two years. Um, that's the hard thing is like the Franklin area is so expensive right now. Yeah, so Knoxville's... Oh, Knoxville's the complete other side yeah, of the state. Yeah, side, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Franklin, my best friend lives in Franklin. She's like, I could sell my house and... Well, we were really good friends in, in college, but she's like, I could sell my house, but I couldn't turn around and buy anything, even though I'm making hundreds of thousands of dollars over what I paid for it because the market is still so crazy. That's insane. She's actually going to be here tomorrow. Oh, so fun. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we're still looking, still on the look. I like Arizona too. I really do. Cause it's, it's dry heat, which I mm-hmm. like better. Um, and just, there's some really nice places in like Scottsdale and yeah. Yeah. But I was just talking to, um, some old clients of ours we ran into on Saturday and he's a financial advisor and he's like, we're stuck like because of the interest rates and everything right now. Like mm-hmm. it's just not a smart financial decision to oh, yeah, move. To yeah. And I was like, I know we feel the same way, but eventually, eventually it's still on my, it's still on my, 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 my vision board, by the way, did you listen? So art sends us podcasts a lot of times or like random videos. And I listened to the podcast that Rob Deerdeck did. Mm-hmm. It was really interesting. He's a really fascinating person. Yeah. So he basically decided to, he obviously makes a ton of money. He does ridiculousness. If you've never, if you don't know who Rob Deerdeck is, he did a TV show about like his skateboarding and then he does ridiculousness, which I love. They're so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but he went to sell a bunch of his companies. And when the investors looked at like his portfolio, they basically told him, you're a horrible investment. You spend <laughs> as much money as you make. And like, we would never invest in you. And he's like, it was really eye opening because I thought, you know, I'm making all this money. I'm living mm-hmm. large. I'm, you know, doing great. And it was a very, you know, eye opening experience. Um, and so what he, after that, he basically hired someone to help him track like every second of his life mm-hmm. to figure out where he's spending his time, where he can give his time to like his employees and, you know, stuff like that. And he's like, cause I want to be able to take a day off and go to, you know, lunch with my wife or leave at four o'clock and pick up my kids. And, you know, if I need to get back to work that night, I want to be able to have that freedom. Um, and it was really interesting. He basically stopped drinking. He wakes up every morning and like exercises, meditates, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how I don't know how anyone would not want to feel as amazing as I feel, which is what keeps me from not going back to what I was doing. Uh, it was a really, really interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, I think that anyone out there who doesn't understand or says that they don't feel the effects of not drinking and being like essentially just like a naked mind and meant very mentally clear. Like I, I just think you're lying and you're not recognizing like yeah. how much of an impact alcohol has on you, even yes. just a couple of drinks. Yeah. The way, the way that I explain it to a lot of people is that when your body is so inflamed internally, systemically, yeah. you don't feel the effects of things because the body can't show you the effects. Mm-hmm. 
it's like a pool that's full. You add water to, you're not going to notice it gets more full. It's spilling out everywhere. Yeah. Versus a pool that's empty, you add water to it, you notice that right away. Yeah. And so when the body is calm, the stressors are reduced on the body. People feel the effects of things so much more. Like I had a conversation with a client the other day and she said, I ate, I tried um, popcorn and I felt really bloated and we're still working through some gut stuff. But she's like, I never felt this before. And I was like, it's possible that you, you were having a Dream reaction. You just didn't truly realize it because the body, one, if your immune system's so low, it can't really launch an attack against things. Like it's just, it's depleted as it is. So it's, it's understanding that a lot of people say, well, I don't feel bad when I eat these things. Remove them for 90 days. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, you have to remove things for a long enough period of time to be able to drain the pool or the yep. bathtub or whatever, right? To really calm down enough inflammation. And when people say like, oh, I tried, you know, I love one of our mentors talking about like, okay, you tried this for two weeks. <laughs> it takes up to six months, sometimes longer for people mm -hmm. to really deflame and get rid of all of the inflammation, all of the shit that their body is trying mm -hmm. to handle because we've become so toxic yeah. that, yeah, I mean, it, it's like the biohacking bombshell. She had a post last week. I loved, it was like a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Okay. And then it's, it's a lot of things that just compile, right? That accumulation effect mm -hmm. that we always talk about, but people don't realize whether it's tap water or candles in their home or, you know, shampoos or makeup or whatever it is, perfumes that you're spraying all over yourself, putting all over your body that all gets into your body through your skin or mm -hmm. obviously your nose or your mouth and your, your body has to filter it somewhere, some yep. way, some shape or form. So over time, yeah, we become toxic and yep. you know, this is where 30 days, I would even say just 30 days. If you really did like a Mediterranean diet, you drank adequate amounts of water with proper, you know, mineral balance, electrolytes and things like that. And you didn't have alcohol. You cannot, I would bet you a hundred dollars. You come back and say, I didn't feel a difference. Either you didn't comply mm -hmm. or you weren't uh, honest with yourself yeah. with, you know, the changes that you really need to make. Or you're just so unaware of how you feel, which is, I think, another situation that a lot Very of people true. end up in. Like something I explained, I was talking with one of our practitioners today, a couple, like when I started the process that I'm in currently, I was starting to notice when I was reading books to Taylor, I was like fumbling over words. Mm children's books suck. Like they all rhyme. There's so many rhyming words. If anyone's ever read the wonky donkey, it's like winky, wonky, honky, tonky, funky, bonky. And I'm like, but I couldn't read. I was like getting to the point where I was really struggling to like say the words without fumbling over them. Yeah. And I noticed this past week I was reading her the same books and I was totally fine. fine. Yeah. And if it takes someone to be so self-aware of those things that you notice that, yeah. and I don't think a lot of people do. Yeah. Cause it just becomes normal, right? We, yeah sometimes things come on slowly. You know, I think about, um, I was actually thinking about this the other day. So like my first car, um, it was the black bundle bumblebee. We called it, it was a black <laughs> Mazda MX three and you know, it had those like electric seat belts, right. Mm -hmm. That just like automatically went on. Oh yeah. But the trunk like wouldn't stay up. That was broken. So I would have to put like a, um, board, you know, a piece of wood in there to hold it up, to prop it up. Uh, because at that point in time we didn't have CD players in the car. So we mm -hmm. had, a CD player system put in and in the trunk was like a 10 CD scrambler type. Thing, oh yeah. Right. Uh, we are aging so, ourselves. Here. We are aging ourselves here. <laughs> um, so in order for me to change out my CDs and do all of that, I had to get like that two by four and prop it up. And at that point in time, that was like just normal because it was what I was used to. It's what I had. Fast forward to today, right? My expectations are much different and that's not normal. That wouldn't be something that I would be, you know, I'd get it fixed somehow, right? Yeah. It wouldn't be acceptable. And I think we oftentimes, depending upon the state that we're in, we just think that all these things kind of become normal because it's just our situation yeah. without realizing that it doesn't have to be this way. And I think also so many people feel this way that when you're talking to maybe family and friends who are not on a health journey and they have no idea or understanding the gibberish that you're telling them that you're working with somebody for your leaky gut or your brain fog or your sleep. We're like, well, I feel that way too. What's wrong with that? Right. It's kind of hard because if you weren't working on yourself, you would just chalk it up to like everybody deals with this or it's yeah. just aging or it's just mom life. So yeah. Anyways. So what we're here to do today <laughs> is not just like ramble at you, but we're actually to share some fun facts that we've learned lately. Um, some tips and uh, I'm excited because this is something that uh, has really been a game changer in our house. 
Um, so my husband was actually starting to struggle with like dry skin on his scalp. Never had this before. Like it's never been an issue. And so we're like, man, what the heck could it be? Um, food has been clean, you know, diets, he's, you know, working out every day, he's hydrated, all that stuff. So you can't really be coming from that. Okay. So we start to look at, you know, okay, we have hard water. Maybe we need to include a water filter here to, you know, change, to soften the water because with hard water, we have calcium and magnesium that can build up on the scalp and that will leave you feeling really dry, itchy, flaky skin can lead to like scalp dermatitis, psoriasis, eczema, things like that, or make it worse if you have one of those inflammatory skin conditions. But then on your hair, I had to change my shampoo because I have colored hair, right? And so I would notice that my blondes would become like a little bit brassy. And so I use a hard water shampoo. And that kind of seems to solve the problem, but still he was experiencing this dry scalp. So he said, okay, let's do a couple things. So we started doing CT minerals. Um, we break that open into a capsule with distilled water and spray it on his scalp. And we got a, um, water filter. So I like Therasage or I like the Jolly. It will also, uh, remove like chlorine and things like that. So chlorine is not good for us. And it actually is worse with heat. So, um, you know, if you are somebody who doesn't filter your water heavily consider investing in that, the jolly shower, um, filter. So this is for our master bath. It's a, it's an investment of 165 bucks, but it's really powerful. Awesome. Um, that's all I can say about it so far. And it's definitely worth the investment, but I was on a training a few weeks back with Dr. Carrie Jones and we were talking about skin stuff and, you know, hormones and things like that. And she's like, well, just a fun fact that I started to kind of go down a rabbit hole and research a little bit about this is there's no regulation on the pH balance in shampoos. So we get into the whole conversation of alkalinity and acidity and things like that. So give you guys a little bit of a high school chem review here, (laughs) um, because this is important. And I think if you have anybody in your house that's struggling with any type of skin condition, dry skin or the scalp stuff, thinning hair, you want to look into changing your shampoo. So water makes up about 60% of the human body, right? So your skin and your scalp also contain water. We know that one of the biggest benefits of being adequately hydrated is that your skin becomes more clear. You just look better, just more color, more vibrant. So every single liquid though falls somewhere on the pH scale, which measures how alkaline or how acidic a liquid is. So your scalp here, just like any other liquid containing thing, has a pH and it's surprisingly acidic. So 4.5 to 5.5 is um, the outermost layer of your skin. That's the acidity of it. Okay. And so it will retain moisture and protect you from germs. Um, But when we are using things that are too alkaline, this can irritate the skin and, you know, dry it out. Most shampoos are between a 3.5 and a 9 on the pH scale. So it's a pretty wide range. And again, this is not regulated. So shampoo companies, most of them don't put it on their, you know, bottles or whatever. You can find it usually on their website and things like that. Um, But the point is getting a pH, a a shampoo and conditioner of a pH that is 5.5 or below has been, I think, the main game changer Um, because when you use a shampoo with super high pH, your scalp, you might feel like it's really super clean, um, but it's going to quickly become dull and dry and itchy um, because of how it breaks down uh, the cuticles and things like that. So this can also impact losing your hair or, um, you know, hair breakage. So it becomes very dry, split ends, frizzy, um, and then again, color loss or fading over time. So those are three things that I would highly recommend. Number one, CT minerals. You can make a paste or you can make a spray get a water filter, uh, and then use a good quality shampoo that is 5.5 on the pH scale or below. Yep. So a couple other things we want to talk about um, in terms of body parts, because I think a lot of people have body parts that they focus on, like my lower stomach or my thighs or my upper arms, kind of the bat wings. A lot of people, a lot of females talk about the bat wings, those, the the, the arm flaps. Um, (laughs) And so understanding kind of where a lot of the body fat accumulation or what seems like body fat accumulation in these areas can stem from. Um, So with the lower abdominal area, a couple places that or a couple root causes that typically drive that one is colon health, um, Mm -hmm. because if you are someone that 
deals with long-term constipation or back and forth constipation diarrhea, which I think a lot of people do, or just inflammation of the GI tract, that is going to protrude. That is going to create a larger lower abdomen than, you know, bacteria what, ferments, distension, yeah, those exactly. Types of things. So that's one of the big ones that we see. And to improve that, you need to look at what is the microbiome doing? Like what is going on within the gut environment? Do you have a balance of microbiome? Are you dealing with a lot of symptoms? Because if you are, it's probably driving inflammation or imbalance or low microbiome, which we see a lot with constipation. Um, so, and bloating too. So you would want to dive deeper into that. Um, we love you know, digestive enzymes can be really supportive. Beta plus is really good for constipation. Um, gut tissue repair it a little bit later phases of, you know, gut processes and healing phases, um, can be really helpful, but you need to, you need to get to the root cause. Like if you're dealing with a ton of digestive stuff, it's, it's likely driven by some of that. Um, and the other thing that often drives lower stomach weight gain is estrogen. Um, so estrogen and cortisol, also have a very kind of close relationship. Um, we also typically see hip weight gain and butt weight gain, like kind of that mid, like, I don't want to say a pear shape per se. So we see a lot of pear shape be associated with hormone weight gain. We see a lot of apple shape be more insulin and um, cortisol. Mm -hmm. So if you have like really thin legs and a huge belly, you see this with people that are diabetic. They, they have very little muscle mass. All of their weight is like just this huge belly. And it makes me so sad to see, but people mm -hmm. that just, you know, the, the weight is like filling over their pants, um, skinny arms, skinny legs, huge belly. That is metabolic resistance. Yeah. That is insulin. And we see it a lot with runners yep. as well. You see a lot with runners. So we definitely see that with not runners, just, you know, runners overweight. and bikers. I see it mm -hmm. like people that are aerobically based athletes that don't also strength train that don't, you know, Aerobic based exercise where you are just a runner or you are just a cyclist, a lot of times have lower bellies, even if they're fit, even if they're not like severely overweight, they often have lower bellies because of the stress that those types of exercise put on the body, um, especially females. Males tend to get away with a lot more. We know that. But for females, if you think about it, the type of exercise that is aerobic based, you don't, you basically don't give your body a break during it. Comparatively to strength training, you're doing sets, you're getting abreast, you're doing sets, you're getting a rest. Can it still be stressful on the system? Of course it can. But when you are doing prolonged training that your heart rate's at an elevated place, you are pulling energy and blood flow away from your digestive system, away from re your reproductive system, and you're pulling it to the muscles. And so this is why we see a lot of runners and a lot of you know aerobic-based athletes with a lot of digestive issues because you're you're spending so long taking energy and blood flow away from pivotal and important systems mm -hmm. that it it creates dysfunction over time. Yeah, and I was um, listening to something with Vince the other day. He was talking about like for those individuals it's really important that post prandial or sorry, post workout window like to get something in your body within 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, compared to like other people like so worried like if I strength train, do I have to be like be leaving the gym drinking a shake like, yeah. you know, right away. Um, and so when you're stressing your body for so long, like obviously intra workout can mm -hmm. be really important, especially if it's like an endurance event yep. where you're biking 100 miles or a marathon, of course, but getting you back into a parasympathetic state, shuttling, you know, cortisol down by increasing your carbohydrates post workout yep. is really important. 15 yeah. minutes is what he was saying is kind of the sweet yeah. spot. And we find too, if you're in a healing phase, you ha almost always have to remove that type of exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard to heal when you're constantly stressing the system. Um, so the other body part that we were talking about, that upper arm area, and a lot of times the side boob, the side boob that you get with like, you know, you're wearing a bra or a sports bra. And as long, you know, if it's not too tight, if it's too tight, it's going to push out skin. Of yeah. course, that could be skin. But a lot of this is actually lymphatic drainage issues. So the body's not draining properly. Your lymph system is not functioning as ideally as mm -hmm. it could. And so we get water buildup basically. Yep. Um, and we often see it in that like bat wing area. And again, of course, it can be body fat too. Um, but it's exacerbated basically by poor lymphatic drainage. And this is something that my coach pointed out to me. She's like, oh, you see your arms on your on your progress photos? That's still we need to work. I was like, Okay, I didn't notice them that much before, but now I notice. <laughs> just kidding. I love Kristen. She's the best. Um, um, it's very interesting, though. I was, this is a few months ago. Um, 
diving into some things around the lymphatic system and the biggest clog for women is below your breast. So not wearing a bra all the time is really helpful. Or also massaging underneath your sternum. I have that. I have like little pockets Mm -hmm. of fat on my upper ribs. That's lymphatic system. I just need, maybe I need to go hire someone to do lymphatic massage for me. So probably five or six years ago, um, a girl that used to come to our gym, Heather, we were pretty close at the time. I was one of her guinea pigs. She was going through a course and Mm. learned how to do lymphatic massage. My pictures were crazy because I went to her twice a week, two or three times a week maybe. Um, And it was over the course of like five or six weeks. Really, really wild. Um, And it felt really good too because it's not like really like deep tissue where you leave and you're like sore. So I was actually talking um, on my Instagram this morning. Someone was asking about they're in a mold eradication protocol and they're breaking out in hives. Immediately we think about need support for lymphatic um, system because you're not detoxifying and draining properly. And so that shit will come out of your skin. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously in that case, something like dry brushing is not going to be comfortable. You have hives, right? So just go online. Very simple. You can uh, Google and look on YouTube videos, manual lymphatic massage, and you will see there are all different things that you can do. You know, there's the good old tricks of, you know, behind your ears, of course, with the armpit, you actually take your thumb like into your armpit and really dig in, Mm -hmm. you know, here. But yeah, so me preparing to explant here soon. One of the things that I've been doing more of is you just give yourself a little breast massage um, and just, you know, wiggle things around there, especially underneath. Um, That's a really big um, kind of clogging point. And then obviously not wearing a bra all the time. So yeah, I try to take off my bra as much as possible when I get home. It's just so freeing. I know. And I I wear like very soft, not tight sports bras and bras because I have itty bitty titties. So I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I don't have to I was, worry about it. I was watching somebody's <laughs> post yesterday in one of the breast can, uh, breast implant groups, and I'm like, it's like I'm going to be totally honest. Like I don't really want them out. Yeah, um, uh, but they're coming t- out. And so I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to get the little push up pads again. And I actually found an old swimsuit that I have from a couple of years. <laughs> this is really old. I should probably throw it away because it's before my implants. So eight years now. I don't know why I still have the swimsuit top, but it's got the double padding in it from Victoria's <laughs> Secret. So I might now need to save I it. I miss Victoria's Secret bathing suits. Those were my favorite when I was yeah. in like, you know, my 20s. Um, I miss being able to shop at places that I can support. That's hard to do these days. So, right. Now we're on to online things like Alabon. I love their stuff. Oh, yeah. I did Amazon. I found it. I found a couple. Cupshe is one that I found that I liked. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people like Cupshe. Yep. Um, I actually have, a, you know, so my my wonderful mother-in-law gives like amazing uh, side, side story, by the way, um, gives amazing stockings every mm-hmm. year. And she gives you like little gift cards and I just accumulate them because I don't ever go to Sephora. I don't ever oh, like yeah. go to Victoria's Secret anymore. I don't shop at malls. Um, well, not with toddlers. Not with toddlers. I like was even thinking about getting Carson a haircut tomorrow after school. And I was like, do I leave Taylor at school and just go back and get her mm-hmm, after I'm done? Mm-hmm. You do. You do. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I have Victoria's Secret gift cards. Maybe I should go find, see if they still have some sweet swimsuit after. Okay. Anyways. The next topic that we wanted to talk about was cellulite, because I think a lot of women struggle with cellulite mm-hmm. or edema, pitting. Um, so cellulite can be a few things. And basically, you have fascia, which is kind of think about like inner webs, like these, these spider webs that hold a lot of our skin together. And you know how spider webs have like these little itty bitty holes in between them, these intricate fascial complexes. And usually what happens is people either lose weight quickly or more often they gain weight quickly. And what happens is that fascia starts to open and fat pushes through the fascia and it gets stuck. And so this is essentially what cellulite can appear as. And estrogen dominance is a big one that will cause this large, quick fluctuations in estrogen. Um, Being on the wrong type of birth control for your body so if you're on like too low of a birth control, too low of a hormone birth control and you're really active and you come off of it and then your body overproduces, um, hormone imbalances and then rapid weight gain are usually the most common cause of it. So the thing is, is when you fix your hormones, you don't fix the cellulite. That's the hard part. Um, typically we see this most in like the glutes and the hips. Um, so like the upper thighs, the glutes, the butt, um, Obviously, one of the easiest ways is to lose body fat to get rid of it. But one of the 
best ways that is a little bit easier to do for some people, because sometimes there's metabolic resistance at play, Mm -hmm. is hydration. Yep. So hydration improvement, because when water is displaced outside of the cell, you are going to look more puffy, inflamed, watery, bloated. And so that is dehydration. I don't care if you're drinking a lot of water. If your body is unhealthy and the body can't get especially if you're not taking in electrolytes, if the body can't get water into the cells, Mm -hmm. it's going to be outside of the cells. Yeah. So you're going to look a lot more puffy. And this is also why we see sometimes body composition change and improvement, even though the scale hasn't moved because you now pull water intracellularly. So you shrink externally Yep. because your body's now able to utilize the water to do the jobs that it needs to do. Because on every single cell, we have a sodium and potassium pump. And this is why electrolytes are so important. So you may be drinking enough water or think you're drinking enough water, um, but your sodium and your magnesium and your potassium and your minerals just aren't there. And this is why we love Element so much. I mean, I'm drinking two to three a day. Becca's drinking what, three to four a day right now? Three to four, yeah. Yeah. I'm also, the thing to remember, if you are low blood pressure, low heart rate, adrenally taxed, that's where I use higher levels. I start with one or two and keep an eye on things. Um, And diet, both of us are in different phases right now. We're in very low sodium diets. Low sodium. Just because we're eating whole foods. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have to compensate. Yeah. So, And it can help with blood sugar for some people. Mm -hmm. So if some people have higher blood sugars um, and it's based off of stress, not like poor diet, adding in more sodium can sometimes help bring blood sugars down. Yep. So, so yeah, there we go. Some fun facts for you guys today. We wanted to kind of keep it lighthearted. I think all of these are applicable. You learn some things. So if you like this episode, let us know. Maybe we'll do more of these um, fun facts. Mm -hmm. And with that, have a great Wednesday. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share the show.